Hello friends, this video on 3 dimensional geometry part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 12. Now we'll go through a very important concept called skew lines. What are skew lines? Skew lines are lines which are neither parallel nor intersect. So if you see, in two dimensional, if we talk about two dimensional, line is either always parallel or they are intersecting. Right? You can't have a line which is neither parallel nor intersect because we are talking only about two dimensional. But when you talk about three dimensional, we can have such lines. For example, I have a line like this and this line, for example, is like this and this line is like this. So this line is in uh, my XY plane and this guy is in XZ plane. So if you see, these lines will never meet. These guys will never meet. Even if you extend this, these guys will never meet. They will never meet. You'll feel, you'll feel that they are meeting, but actually they will not meet. They will not meet. They will be different altogether. Right? Because this is a different plane, this is a different plane altogether. Right? So they will never meet. So such kind of concepts come only in 3D. So in 2D, there is no skew line. But when you talk about 3D, yes, we have skew lines. Because three dimensional, we have a more dimensional. So we have case where the lines are skewed, that is, they are neither parallel nor intersecting. And in three dimensional, if there are two lines and they are not intersecting, it is very interesting to find the distance between them. Why? Because in real life, we have everything in three dimensional. All the engineering work we do, right? Engineering work, everything in three dimensional. And in that case, uh, we actually need to find distance between them. So, when you talk about skew lines, we also talk about distance between skew lines. So, let's, let's take a very important topic called distance between two skew lines in the vector form. So, I have two lines, R1 is equal to A1 plus lambda B1 and R2 is equal to A2 plus mu2 B2. So this is R1, this is R2, two lines. I have to find distance between them. The shortest distance between them. Please note, I have to find the shortest distance between them. To do this, let's suppose I have two lines and A1, let's suppose this point is A1 and this point is A2, right? And this uh, line vector will be lambda B1 and this will be lambda B2. I have to find shortest distance between them. Shortest distance between them will be given by this formula. P1 cross B2 dot A2 minus A1 vector by P1 cross B2 magnitude. So to prove this, let's join this line A1, A2. Also, let's assume that this is the shortest distance. The clue we know that the shortest, the line which is the shortest distance between these two lines, that line will be perpendicular to both of these Q lines. So let's find the direction of this because that is an interesting thing for us because we know the direction of this, right? So let's find the unit vector, unit vector. And let's assume the distance between them is D and let's give some name. This guy is A, this guy is T, this guy is P, this guy is Q. So first thing I know that in this case is PQ will be the PQ vector. I need to have to find D vector actually, right? D, distance D. So let's find the unit vector first n, n cap. So n cap will be nothing but cross product of these two vectors, these vectors lambda b1, lambda b2, and then divide by magnitude of these vectors. That is lambda b1 cross lambda b2 by magnitude of lambda b1 cross lambda b2. Sorry, mu b2. This is lambda b1, this is mu b2. Correct. So if you see lambda mu cancels, so what I get is my unit vector is nothing but b1 cross b2 by magnitude of b1 cross b2. This is my unit vector that I have got. You know that this pq vector is nothing but, if you see the pq vector is nothing but d into n vector because this is the distance and this is the magnitude, so I have distance and magnitude both, I got PQ vector. Correct. 
Now I have to find this distance d. Distance d will be nothing but distance st. That is st, distance of st. Not talking about st, but distance of st into cos theta, where theta is nothing but the angle. Let's suppose this is st vector, angle between st and pq. That if it is st, and let's suppose I have this guy pq here. PQ vector is like this. Theta is the angle. You can take it, both are same actually. So this ST cos theta will be minus this guy. What is cos theta actually? Cos theta is nothing but my ST dot PQ ST vector dot PQ vector by magnitude of ST and magnitude of B. Am I correct? Because a dot b is magnitude of a into magnitude of b into cos theta. So cos theta will be this two vector dot product by magnitude of st magnitude of b. St st gets cancelled. So what I get d as st is what a two minus even vector a two minus even vector dot pq. What is pq vector? Pq vector is d dot n vector. D dot n vector is what this guy b one cross b two by b one cross b two magnitude. Correct by magnitude of pq. Magnitude of pq is d by d. D d get cancelled and thus I get the distance is nothing but a two minus a one. Dot b one cross b two by magnitude of b one cross b two, and this is my distance between p and q, and there is the shortest distance between this. So I can say that the shortest distance between two skew lines is a two minus a one dot b one cross b two by magnitude of b one cross b two, where I have two lines as a one plus lambda b one and Other line as a two plus new bit. Let's take the same thing in the Cartesian form. So I have these two lines, l one and l two, and I have to say that the distance between these two is this guy. So if you see that, I just convert this guy. This this, this is r one. This is nothing but line passing through x y and z, x one y one z one, and and that is parallel to a one b one and c one. This is nothing but x one i plus Y one j cap plus z one k cap plus lambda into a one i plus b one j plus c one k cap, and this guy is nothing but line passing through s two y two z two and parallel to a two b two c two vector. That is x two i cap y j cap plus z two k cap plus lambda into or lambda is in the mu. Or again, the lambda two also is lambda one. This is lambda two into a two i cap plus b two j cap plus c two k cap. These are two equation, and for these equation, I know that the angle between them is or the this the distance is nothing but a two minus a one. That is this guy x two minus x one i plus y two minus y one j. Plus z2 minus z1 k dot product of this into cross product of these two a1 a2 b1 uh, a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 this will come out to be i j k a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 correct matrix dot product of this divide by magnitude of b1 cross b2 a, that is this guy. Magnitude of this, i j k, a one, b one c one, a two b two c two. Correct? Because this guy is nothing but if this guy is p vector, this guy is q vector, this guy is p cross q, right? This guy is p cross q, and that's what I'm looking for. So I'm to find the magnitude of this. So if you solve this, you'll get similar to this. If you solve this, you'll get nothing but these as. 
x2 minus x1 this will get a1 a2 this will get y2 minus y1 b1 b2 this will get z2 minus z1 c1 c2 right this is the matrix divide by if you see the magnitude of this you see this will come out to a matrix i into b1 c2 minus b2 c1 minus j into uh, a2 c a1 c2 minus a2 c1 and k into a1 b2 minus b2 c1 and with that if you take magnitude this will come out with the same thing here so b1 c2 minus b2 c1 square plus this guy c1 a2 minus c2 a1 square plus a1 b2 minus a2 b1 square same thing so this is exactly what you'll get so if you solve these so it, it's a lengthy thing you have to solve I won't solve it for you. You can do it on your own. This needs a little bit of knowledge of matrix and the vectors which have been already discussed. You can solve this in exactly get same value as the answer. So if you have two equation of line given in the Cartesian form, you can find the distance in this formula or better is you just convert this into the vector formula and you can use the vector formula. So in that case, you don't need to remember two formulas. You can, be, you can solve the question only with one formula. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.